everybody and welcome back to my channel. Before I get started I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that has recently subscribed. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I have just reached 100 subscribers and I am so so happy about that so thank you. If you would like to subscribe make sure you do so you never miss out on my art content. I post every single week so make sure you subscribe in today's video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint a really easy autumnal scene. So lots of nice fall colours with those golden yellows and oranges and reds because I thought it would just be a really nice way to relax this weekend because everything has just been a little bit crazy recently with the US election and also England going back into lockdown so I thought this would be a good way just to relax and be a bit creative and kind of just put all of those things to one side for a little while. So make sure you grab your paintbrushes, your watercolours and paint along. So let's get started. I've prepped my watercolour paper by just wetting it down a bit and I'm going to tape it to my table so that it doesn't ruckle when I come to actually paint on it. So this is a really important step to get a nice finish with your watercolour paper. So if you've done any watercolours in the past and found that your watercolour paper buckles then the reason would be because you don't tape it down. Okay, I'm going to get started by just creating a watercolour wash across my page and I'm going to build up my image with different layers of watercolour. So I'm going to start with a really light colour and then I will build up on that. So I'm using my watercolours that came in a tube rather than a pan of watercolours. I'm using those paintbrushes again that I bought from the works. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link that in the description box below. I tried out lots of different art materials from the works, gouache and also their acrylics along with these paintbrushes. So I'm kind of stippling this on here because I want to still maintain some of that yellow coming through underneath for the time being until I've decided what I actually want to do with this paint and just lightly patting over the top of my watercolour to work that onto the page. So I'm going to continue doing that all the way across. I'm, I think I'll leave a certain area without it so that it can build up like a nice area where the light is coming through. So I'm actually going to edge this up a little bit further so we've got a horizon line up there and then I'm going to start building up the layers of my watercolour to intensify them and then give this piece a little bit more depth definition. This is going to be our background for a tree line. Okay, I'm now going to start adding a darker section across the top here because I want that to look like the tree is dangling across here and it's got those autumnal leaves on the tree. And then down here I will start building up some of the leaves that have fallen on the ground. So I'm adding quite a bit of texture by just randomly adding in my paintbrush. This is going to add quite a nice movement to that piece. So we'll see some of those oranges and yellows coming through where I have layered and then there's also some areas within this that hasn't been painted over so we still retain some of those yellow tones really quite nicely. I'm now going to mix a darker red because I want to include some shadows within this where the leaves are a lot darker. So I'm just mixing up some of my burnt sienna with my crimson red and I'm just mixing that together to create a really dark shade of a red and then I'm going to apply that to some areas within my painting. I only want to go lightly for now though in case I decide that I don't want that in there and then I can lift that out. I just need to fix this area because I placed in my shadow but then decided I didn't actually want that running all the way up to my horizon line. So I have removed that out with some water and I'm just placing some colours back into this area where it had also removed some of those colours that I obviously didn't I'm just going to fix that area. So to remove your watercolours you can use water on a clean paintbrush to remove any areas that you don't want or you can use a piece of paper towel if you lightly dab that onto your paper. So you need to make sure your paper towel is actually a little bit damp 
and then you would place it on the same way as I did with my paintbrush and you can just soak up the watercolours that you don't actually want onto your, onto your paint. Across the bottom of my painting I have just added in some shadows for the trees that I'm going to add in on the horizon lines and I firstly added those in in quite a light brownie red and I'm now darkening those areas. I went in light to begin with because I wasn't entirely sure whether those were the areas that I wanted to place my shadows in but now I've decided that they're definitely going in there. I'm adding in a slightly darker tone before I then add some further details to that autumnal tree canopy. Now I'm going to darken certain sections and again I'm using that stippling effect so that I can still see some of my colours from underneath. I still want to see some of those yellows and some of those oranges. And then I follow that same step along the bottom of my painting. I'm going to start adding in a branch that comes down here so I'm going to hold my paintbrush just at the top to get a really light line on where I want that to go because I want it to start really thin on one edge and then gradually gain a little bit more thickness to it so I don't want to put too much pressure on my paintbrush and I also want it to look a little bit more realistic so I've just got a little bit of dark brown so I've got a burnt umber on my paintbrush and I'm going to now pull that across I need to loosen that a bit it's a bit dry and I don't want too much paint on my paintbrush because I don't want it to be too thick so I need to try and find the right balance of my paint as I go up, I'm going to slightly push down on my paintbrush just to widen the bristles. And you can see that it is a slightly more realistic looking branch because it's a bit thinner down this end. Although not as thin as I would like, but that will be fine. I'm just experimenting. It's not, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. So I'm just experimenting with my paints. I think that's the important thing to do when you're painting or trying out different art techniques is not to put too much pressure on yourself, you know, to make it look perfect first time. I'm now going to start adding in the tree trunks. I'm going to pull those up from the horizon line up to the top of my painting. And I'm using that same dark brown that I used for the branches, making sure that the bottom of the trunk is much, much darker because that's where the light is not going to be able to hit. And as I go up the page, my painting actually gets lighter. So I remove some of that colour from my paint just by adding a little bit of water to loosen that paint ever so slightly. As you can see on the trunk that I'm currently painting, I leave a gap in the middle of the tree trunk. This is because the area within the middle is the brightest where that sunlight is streaming in and that would naturally leave a very, very bright highlight on that area of the tree trunk. I also make sure that on the tree trunks that I'm now painting, I add in some yellow highlights on one edge because again, that light is really bright and it's got a nice warm hue to it so it would reflect on that side of a tree trunk. Once I have added in my tree trunks, I then refine the very background of my painting and I add in a slightly darker tree line along that horizon line. So I'm just making sure that I get the impression of the trees in, in the background. Okay, now to take the tape off, which I think is one of the most satisfying things of a watercolour painting. When you see that really nice crisp line around your painting, So there you have it, that was my video on the watercolours for that autumnal scene. Obviously if you are in England a lot of stuff is currently closed so it might be quite a nice way to spend a weekend afternoon just getting a bit of painting done. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have make sure you leave me a comment to let me know what you liked about my watercolour painting. Also make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of my videos. Thank you so so much for watching. I will see you next week guys. Bye!